In this section 6.5, uh, this is optimization part two, and what we're doing is we're exploring solutions. Now we've talked a little bit about this in 6.4 already, um, and again, in the textbook they split this up into three sections, um, and, and I kind of, uh, it's, it's one big uh, concept, so I've talked a little bit about this already in the previous lessons, but here we just want to kind of formalize it, uh, exploring solutions, and we're talking about optimal solutions. So we're optimizing uh, a value of something. And so when we talk about the solution set or solutions that are inside the feasible region, we're looking at what are those solutions, where do we find those in the feasible region. And so uh, let's just go through this, uh, <clears throat> this example here and this will be the, really the bulk of the lesson, just going through this example. So the toy, a toy company manufactures two types of toy vehicles, racing cars and sport utility vehicles. Because the supply of materials is limited, no more than 40 race cars and 60 sport utility vehicles may be made each day. Okay, so no more than, no more than a 40 racing cars. Okay, do we see that somewhere here? Let's see, number of racing cars, so here's 40. So this line right here would set a limit for the number of racing cars. So you see we have an inequality. This is the line here uh, for 40 <coughs> racing cars and everything below is, is shaded. Also, we have 60 SUVs that could be made, only 60. So here's SUVs down on this part right here. And here's 60. And so there's a vertical line there with everything to the left shaded there for that one, okay? So those are our first two constraints, just like we did in the previous sections. However, the company can make 70 or more vehicles in total each day, okay? 70 or more vehicles in total each day. Do we see that anywhere on this graph? Can we include that? Well, if you look at the constraints here that they have here, do any one of those uh, correspond with no more than 70 of those vehicles each day? Or looks like, uh, sorry they can make 70 or more vehicles in total each day. So it's R plus S is greater than or equal to 70. So here it is right here, this oblique line right here. And it's everything greater than that. So this is the region is above that line. So, so far we've got this little part right here, right? Um, and the other ones here, the other constraints that we haven't taken a look at would be S is greater than or equal to zero, R is greater than or equal to zero. So we can't make a negative number of cars. That's, so we're dealing with quadrant one here, this first quadrant, okay? So here's all the constraints. Let's finish the question here. It costs $8 to make a racing car and 12 to make an SUV toy car. There are many possible combinations of racing cars and SUVs that could be made. The company wants to know what combination will result in the minimum and maximum costs and what those costs will be. So this is not unlike the questions that we have been doing, that you've been working on. So there's something that the company wants to maximize or minimize, and so that is going to be the objective function right here. So the cost is going to be 12S plus 8R. Okay, so the, the, the bottom line is here, and like I say, I have mentioned this before, that the solutions that we are going to be looking for are probably going to be at or near the corners of the boundaries of the feasible region, okay? If you think about it, all right, look at the maximum number of racing cars here, 40, for example. If I chose a point right here, that's in the feasible region, but we are not sort of, um, we're not looking at the maximum amount of output that, that, we can, that we can have here. So why would this point be any better than, you know, this point? We may as well take it right to the limit, right? And so the corners represent the limits either the maximum limits or the minimum limits of all of the constraints, okay? So we're gonna write that down just as a note here. I think that's a, a good thing to do. So let's just, uh, let's write that down as a note. Okay, so <clears throat> in summary here, what we're saying is the corners of the feasible region, and uh, explain that down here a little bit, the points of intersection of the constraint inequalities, the corners, represent the maximum or minimum values for all of the constraints. So again, if we look at the feasible region on, back on our, uh, on our textbook here, we could pick any of these points, but the optimal solutions would be where we max out, say the number of cars that could be built here, we max out the number of cars that could be built here, right? And we max out you know, this, all these other 
points. So we look at the corners. Okay, so if we're trying to maximize or minimize, we should look at the corners for our solutions. Note, if the inequality line, that is the boundary line, for any reason is not part of the feasible region, so if it's not greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to, then the values close to those corners will probably be the solution. All right, so basically saying that if any one of these constraint lines, right here, these three, if any of those were not or equal to, then the point that lies on that line would not be able to be considered. But you could see that maybe there's another point like right here that could be pretty close to this line but not on it, right? So one of these points might be the maximum or minimum, okay? Any questions there so far? Why don't we finish off just by answering, actually answering this question here. Can we look at some answers here? So cost, what's the minimum uh, and maximum cost? So if we look at the intersection here, and yeah, you could use your graphing calculator to find intersection points. If you graph these lines, so the corresponding lines, R equals 40, S equals 60, R plus S equals 70. If you graph those three lines, um, you could find the intersection point. Your graphing calculator, just note, is not going to graph a vertical line for you, I don't believe. So that one you're going to have to just kind of figure out uh, on your own without using the calculator. But you could certainly find this point and this point with your graphing calculator if you're unsure. Okay? What's that? How would you be able to find the bottom point if it won't graph a vertical Well, okay, so if, if this line can't be graphed, how would you find this point? You have this right here, right? And so you're basically looking for wherever this value is 60. So in on this line, you just plug in, uh, this is S equals 60. So and you solve for R. So you just have to solve for it algebraically or intuitively. So if you, you should sketch this on your in your notebook as well, even if you use the graphing calculator, sketch it, do a quick sketch, put your important values on there. And then a vertical line, you'll see that this line always has to be 60. So you plug in X equals 60 into your equations here and you get these two or S in this case. Okay? All right, so here's our points. Which one, which one of these points uh, is going to represent a maximum? So the maximum cost, do you think? So 12S plus 8R. Which one's going to be the maximum cost? We should probably just, let's take a minute just to test that out real quick, okay? So we want to plug, take each one of these points separately and plug them in here, okay? So uh, S is... Uh, sorry, which one's S again? Is that the racing cars? Sport utility. Okay, so sport utility cars. And uh, so this is S. So 12 times 60 is going to be 1,200 plus 8 times 10 is 80. So we've got 1,280, I guess, sir, for cost. Uh, is that right? So what about this one over here for cost? So we've got 60 again, plus 8 times 40. So that's going to be quite a, a larger cost. So what is, what is this one? Let's, let's write this out. We calculate these values, and uh, this is actually 800 uh, for a cost right here for the first one for this 6010. The second one, you plug that into the objective function. We have a 1040 for a cost here, and that's for this one right here. And then 680 is the cost for this point right here. So we can now, we can easily see between these three values which one is our maximum cost, which one is our minimum cost. So you would answer the question in a word <coughs> sentence here because it's a word problem, and you'd say the maximum cost comes when the company makes 60 sport utility vehicle cars and 40 race cars. That's the maximum cost. The minimum cost that would fit in this feasible region would be making 30 SUVs and 40 race cars and you would state what those uh, what those answers are and it looks something like this. Okay, so you would just write a word sentence like that summarizing sort of what we found to answer that question. Okay, maximum cost is this and it comes from making you know these two numbers of the cars and then the minimum cost is that making those. Questions? Okay. So in summary here, I guess we didn't talk about this definition here, but the optimal solution is the point in the solution that represents the maximum or minimum value for the objective function. Okay, so that's what you would call the optimal solution. And um, 
course, we had two solutions there, one maximizing the cost, one minimizing the cost, but usually the question just asks for one. So key ideas here, the value of the objective function for a system of linear qualities varies throughout the feasible region, but in a predictable way, and the optimal solutions are represented by points of intersection of the boundaries of the feasible region. That's the main point in this whole lesson. And if the boundaries are not part of the solution, the, the uh, optimal solution will be nearby. So you can verify each optimal solution to make sure it satisfies the constraints by substituting into any of the linear inequalities. And the intersection points of the boundaries are called vertices or corners of the feasible region as well. All right, so that's just the lesson on where to find um, your optimal solutions. They're, they're going to be at the corners of the feasible region.